What's up, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and oops, a little piece of news accidentally got out. Turns out that the, uh, the terrible, terrible loser that did the terrible things in Georgia late last week uh, is a member of the LGBTQ community and is upset, was upset, with uh, how trans people were being accepted. Now, my comments, you know, are, are about the media hypocrisy. First and foremost, obviously an incident like this is just awful in every conceivable way. And I fully support um, putting uh, officers at every single school so that they are not such a soft target. I'm not going to have the conversation about, you know, getting rid of anything. We have a Second Amendment in this country and that's pointless. If you really care about stopping these type of things, then you'll talk about practical solutions. One of them is, in fact, a uh, you know making fewer soft targets. In fact, we now know that <clears throat> the uh, incident at the school was stopped by the school officer. Uh, now, if they had had two or three of them, or maybe four, maybe they never would have got inside at all. But some new interesting. Updated results, in fact, our updated story. First, the mother called the school 30 minutes before and told them what was going to happen. The mother of that loser told the family that she called her son's school to warn them of an extreme emergency on the morning that he allegedly did what he did. Marcy Gray, the, the loser's mother, was seen in text messages shared by the Washington Post telling her fam uh, family, I told them there was an extreme emergency and for them to go immediately find my son and check on him. The report, the outlet reported that the call log from the family shared with the phone plan shows that Gray made a 10 minute call to the school at 9.50 a.m. on Wednesday, about half an hour before the incident. Uh, Marcy's father uh, told the New York Post that he had delivered an apology to his mother via text message prior to the incident, prompting her to call the school. It just said, I'm sorry, Mom. Marcy then hopped in a car and started driving towards the school more than three hours away, but about halfway there, she learned what was going on and that it had already taken place. A counselor from the school told Marcy that her son had been talking about these type of things that morning, according to Gray's sister, Annie Brown, who spoke to the Post. Soon after things began, reports surfaced that the high school received a warning that the whole thing could be unfolding. In reported texts sent by Marcy, she told her family, I was the one that notified the school counselor at the school. According to Brown, her sister also called the school because she learned something concerning that made her feel an impending disaster. However, it was not reported. Her sister, Annie Brown, said that Marcy was told by the counselor that her son was displaying disturbing behavior that morning, ominously talking about doing this thing. At the same time, one of Colt's classmates, uh, Leah Sarath, who previously shared a chilling account of how close she came to passing, told the outlet that the school administrator went to find Colt in their class. In previous account to CNN, she had said that Colt was a serial class skipper and that she assumed that that's what he was doing when he left the classroom minutes before the administrator arrived. However, there was some confusion as there was another student with a very similar name in Colt's class. Neither was in the room. The administrator left the room with similarly named students' backpack. Minutes later, it began. Um, they were called 30 minutes ahead of time, clearly not trained enough. Uh, the school should have gone in immediate lockdown at that moment. Um, you know, that, that's any, I mean, again, I'm not going to hear the, well, you know, if these things weren't around, these things wouldn't happen. That's an alternate reality. Okay. This is America. We have the second amendment. And these things are not going to go away. And zeroing in on one particular tool that is often used also 
will not stop these events. So the, anybody who is worried about, oh, we need to ban this type of, uh, of weapon, or we need to do this, or we need to do that, they're dumb. They don't actually care about solving the problem. The real solution would be to have uh, two to three law officers at every exit entrance of a school, and uh, that would basically do it. Standing outside, policy was the doors are locked. When school's in session, they don't unlock until school's out of session uh, or by you know police escort. It's just, yes, I agree. It sucks that this is it's something that happens almost every year now. But what's curious is further text messages reported that Marcy's sister showed that Colt, that Colt's school and family were also in contact regarding his deteriorating mental health at least a week before the incident. In one text, Brown reportedly told a relative that Colt, Colt was having terrible thoughts. He shouldn't have a weapon, and there and he should have been in therapy months ago. She added in the text, it, it comes as um, his father, who turns out is a real piece of garbage, uh, abandoned his dogs. Uh, he was evicted from his apartment, abandoned his dogs, but broke back in to get his weapons. Uh, he's also been charged with a litany of crimes, including for the crimes that which his son done had done. Prosecutors say he gave his son the weapon with knowledge he was a threat to himself and others. Both father and son are facing life in prison. This is a, a difficult topic. It's a dicey one to talk about because the father had nothing to do with it. Um, we saw this, I think, for the first time in history with the Michigan case where the parents were charged. Um, <clears throat> in this case, the mother called ahead of time and was like, hey, something's going on. If she tried to prevent it. Um, you know, I don't know how I feel about it. I'm sure the comment section will. You know, it's such a dicey situation like, OK, so if the kid broke into the safe and took it. You know, is it the dad's fault? I mean, you have to secure your, your items if you have, you know, people around the house that can get access to them. You know, I have, not only do I have a safe, but I have a lock on the door. Uh, keep, you know, a uh, um, security lock on a safe door just to get into the room where they exist. I know that not everyone can go that far, but certainly you can have locks on them, trigger locks, all sorts of other stuff. You know, this individual, of course, has a long history of making these types of threats and Discord servers, all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, and then she, you know, someone opened up the door and, well, what happened happened. Terrible, right? And I don't like to politicize these things. The grandfather of the Georgia uh, kid that did what he did says the boy's father deserves the ultimate penalty for his part in it. Maternal grandfather Charles Paul Paul Hamus told or says that Congress should bear much of the responsibility. Spend spending eleven years with that son of a bee screaming and hollering every day it can affect anybody. He's evil. They couldn't. They just couldn't survive in it. Colt has to pay for what he did, but I'm telling you, he was driven. No question in my mind. He was driven by his father to do what he did. As plain as I can say. Well, then why didn't he take out his father? You know. You know, you see the last thing, you know, grandpa never, never intervened. They did intervene. They tried getting him counseling for months. The alarm bells were going off for months. This, I feel like this could have been avoided. Now, interestingly enough, now why you're not going to see this story anymore in the news is because the kid was LGBT. Now, I think that what he did was terrible loser behavior and really the press in general should not be reporting on these individuals part of why they keep doing it in my opinion is that they get famous right they live on forever and then they also inspire other people to do it that's why their names and their mug shots and their all this kind of stuff just shouldn't be out there in general their their name shouldn't be trending on twitter when it gets you know when twit when it's on x it should just be suppressed Nah, I guess not. Free speech matters. But the the way that they are often, like, they get all this fame out of it, it's interesting. You know, his son is carrying out this. 
he, you know, people were making fun of him because he was queer, I guess. Uh, I don't really know what that means. I thought that meant you were just gay or whatever. But then he also went into a Discord server and was talking about trans rights and all this kind of stuff. So the media is going to drop this immediately. Now, what do I think drove him to doing this was probably getting relentlessly bullied and having a terrible father and being a, you know in a terrible situation in their life. Um, but this is somebody who has been openly saying that they're going to commit this act. They referenced, uh, you know, different schools and expressed frustration, frustration with the acceptance of trans people. So the kid was a woke leftist ideologue, probably supported Kamala Harris. None of that matters because innocent people lost their lives this day. The purpose of this video is to not make this loser famous, but it's to point out what's going to happen now that we know this, what's going to happen in the mainstream media, and they're going to stop covering it. Just look what it took. Just look what it took to find out literally anything about, um, you know, Aubrey, who happened to be trans, right? Maybe it had nothing to do with it, but you literally had a local judge blocking the release of their manifestos. You had uh, the municipal Nashville police um, lying saying, oh, we can't release this document because it's a blueprint for other people to do it. Well, now that we've seen that, we know that was a lie. Why are they covering for these people? You know, how many, we don't know this. I don't know the answer to this, but were they on SSRIs and what other kind of, you know, mental stuff? Maybe, maybe they were on none. I don't know. But I'm starting to, people are starting to make connections, links with these type of, you know, prescriptions that people are on. Maybe they're causing psychosis or they're making things worse. You know, the, the, the kids, you know, are doing this, you know, the kids weren't doing this before social media, you know, for the most part. I shouldn't say that, but for the most part, these were not. There'll be more this year, too. Homeschool's on the rise. The media will move on now because, well, they, that's what they do. They don't care about reporting the truth. Take care about ideology. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like on it. If you haven't yet, please do subscribe or follow down below, and we'll talk to you again real soon.